cold and a little bit of snow left over from yesterday as we get ready for tip-off. Take a look at our starting lineups. We mentioned Brooks and Green facing off. Jalen Williams in the starting lineup. That's good news for Auburn. Suffered a shoulder injury, non-shooting shoulder against USC on Sunday. Didn't practice Monday, but he was back to work today. And a big man matchup to keep an eye on as well with Braxton Mia, the seven-footer for UW, facing off with the 6'10", Janai Broom. In Seattle, and there's plenty of them are icy, but uh, with no students here in school, uh, good turnout. Going to be a nice atmosphere. Michael Irving, Vern Harris, and Marquise Pettigrew are referees. And Auburn in the white wins the tip. Nine wins, two losses this year so far for the Tigers. Nine and three for the Huskies. Auburn coming off a heartbreaking loss on Sunday to USC. Washington has won three of four. Two good defensive teams, too. Excellent defensive teams. They'll both play multiple. Uh, UW obviously more of a zone team. Here's the big man matchup. Jani Broom falling away, and it won't go down. The rebound for Keon Brooks, and he'll bring it up. Yeah, and Jani Broom starts already talking to the officials. He's got to just settle and play. I thought that hurt him against uh, USC. Jamal Bay gives it over to P.J. Fuller, guarded tight by Zepp Jesper. And there's a steal for Chris Moore. This is Green. Cannot finish, but the follow is there for more. Well, there's two things that are a problem for anybody that plays Auburn. You can't turn the ball over against him. UW just did, and you got to keep him off the offensive glass. UW just didn't. Cole Badgham, a second leading scorer for the Huskies with the ball. Badgham averaging 11 points per game, but a good three point shooter again this year, over 40%. They don't really want Braxton Mia handling the ball out there. And he gets fouled. Maybe a little bit of a bailout. Janai Broom got him across the arm. Bruce Pearl is all over Janai Broom saying, what are you doing? You got a seven-footer about 28 feet away from the basket about to fumble the ball and you foul him. Broom, a very good defensive player. There you see an early substitute. Keon Manyfield, the true freshman, just inbounded, got it back as Badgema sits down. Manyfield cuts it loose. Had a good line to cut the back rim. Keon Manyfield also a buddy of Wendell Green because he's from Michigan, uh, from Flint, Michigan, so he's known uh, Wendell Green for a long time himself. Green. Jalen Williams. Can't hit Mia there, the rebound. They spent a lot of time at their two practices here, Monday night and yesterday, Auburn, trying to get the ball in the middle of that 2-3 zone. Mia battling inside. Steps out of bounds as Chris Moore came to help. And yeah. a turnover. That's half Minnie's fault. He on minifield, he kind of led him there, but Braxton himself has got to realize how close he is to the baseline. He could have caught it and stayed in bounds, but it, it should have been a better pass. And there's a takeaway. Minifield with Williams on him. So he gives off to Brooks. Clean look at a three, way too strong. Streaky three-point shooter. Keon can make him, but he also can go cold. He's under 30% on the season entering play tonight. Here's Green, and it won't go down. Good job by Braxton Mia contesting the shot. Mia then running the floor, getting deep position. He can't convert on the first effort and gets fouled on the second by Green. He wanted to dunk it, but... Janai Broom, who's a strong and one of the best defenders. He was the defensive player of the year in the OVC. He was leaning on him, so he couldn't get up and dunk the way he wanted to. Still, good job by Braxton Mia. Uh, good job by his teammates locating him down under. His free throw is a work in progress, and he's doing it very well. Watch. He'll just release the left hand. That's pretty pure. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It vastly improved from what we saw in October and November in the practices. Auburn, by the way, also has a little bit of a turnover problem. They turned it over 23 times against USC on Sunday, especially in the second half. 14 second half turnovers really hurt them. Both these teams have had to be gritty at times yeah. this year, which, of course, is part of the DNA. Williams. Yeah, that's where they wanted in the middle. 
quick spin by Broom. Open look for more, and he cashes it in right in front of the UW bench. Yeah, he's been shooting the ball better lately. You don't think of him as an offensive player. Chris Moore is more a blue-collar guy, but he has been giving him some offense lately. Only one field goal attempt last week. He's taken only 12 threes this year, but he's made seven of them now. Yep. Bay tries to answer with a long two. Maybe the Huskies a little amped up from the outside. Uh, Jamal Bay's got to get it going from the perimeter. They're counting on him to be that outside threat. When the Green thought he was fouled, he was shooting it, but he was looking for the foul call. Here's Bay again. And it goes to Auburn, a turnover for Washington. Uh, Jamal missed his first shot, but he's got to stay aggressive. He went in there and he kind of put Keon Brooks in a tough situation right there. KD Johnson will check in now for Auburn. These are two very good defensive teams when it comes to the three-point arc you see the um, rankings there two of the best in the app in, in the country they're really really good at getting out and contesting the three-point shot in addition to being two of the best shot blocking teams in the nation yeah, yeah. So one and two yeah, one into auburn is an unbelievable shot blocking team they've led the country in shot blocks two years in a row and they're currently in first by a sizable margin over uw Here's Moore, just hit the three, and can't connect there, bothered by Brooks. Many fields a true freshman, active for the Huskies, and he gets swatted out of bounds, right on cue, a block. Yeah, but we Chris talked Moore. about the blocks, you're going to see that. We didn't talk about Chris Moore, because he's not somebody you expect to knock down the three, but here, good pass by Janai Broom. This is some basketball program, and thanks to Pat Holmes, they're excellent coach for sending that picture along and allowing us to use it and Isaiah Stewart of course we're going to be a first round pick out of uh, Washington here Jaden Ivy not on that team in that photo but also teammates with him there that's just incredible level of talent so out of the timeout here's Mia both teams struggling Washington yet to hit a field goal attempt third team foul on Auburn it's cold outside and it's cold inside <laughs> The dogs are 0 for 5, and uh, Auburn has started out 2 for 8. So neither team setting it on fire yet, but credit the defenses for that. The foul was on KD Johnson for Auburn, his first. Well, they pressure all over the place. Badgema, who was an early sub out for the Huskies, back in. Mike Hopkins telling his players to get out of the way so they can run a two-man play. Here's Brooks. Four seconds on the shot clock. Fuller's got to let it fly. He does. And UW now 0 of 6 and 0 of 4 from beyond the arc, taking well, a lot of threes. They're struggling to get good looks. They're settling right now. Auburn defense has them back on their heels. Auburn's got great quickness and they're pressuring really as soon as they cross half court. Trey Donaldson, who came off the bench, had a great game against SC. That ball was partially blocked. It'll stay with Auburn. Donaldson had a career-high 12 points against the Trojans on Sunday, the freshman. Block shots of the order of the night uh, That's so right. far here. Trey Donaldson was a big-time football player. Played football for Charlie Ward at uh, Florida State University High School uh, and was recruited big-time at both sports. Coming off his best game, guy. He looked good Sunday. Far and away his best game as a Tiger. Three on the shot clock. Uh, Williams can't connect, but he gets fouled after the offensive board. Yeah, that's the problem, the offensive rebound. He, uh, what appeared to be an excellent defensive possession, but it doesn't amount to anything if you don't secure the rebound. That's the second time already where they wasted like 29 seconds of good defense and don't come up with the rebound. Foul on Braxton Mia, his first first team foul for the Huskies. That's huge. Braxton Mia's got to stay out of foul trouble. Uh, it was one thing when I had Frank Kepnong and I had one of the best combinations at that position. Right now they're a little thin, so Braxton cannot be leaving his feet which he tries to do sometimes to block shots, and they need him on the floor. Kept on the big uh, transfer from Oregon who came in, and things were just starting to come together. He was leading the team in blocks, averaging nine points a game. He's injured out for the season. The good news for the Huskies, expecting at least potentially Noah Williams could be back by their SC game. Yeah, you see Noah's uh, sitting with the coaches. He's sitting next to Quincy Pondexter on the bench. Um, that's another problem right there. After free throws, dead ball situations, Auburn presses, and their presses, they don't allow the ball in bounds. They make you work to get the ball in bounds. They'll play anybody 
Um, Katie Johnson, that's a mistake right there. There's been a couple mistakes. Bruce Pearl hates that. He wants the pressure, but he doesn't want the fouls that often accompany it. And again, that was a problem Sunday. All the fouls they committed, 25 of them against USC. There's the first field goal for the Huskies. Another freshman. Corin Johnson, the Seattle native. Garfield High School. How many great players has Garfield Oh, produced? boy, a ton. Brandon Roy is the coach now, and that was one of the best to ever come out of Garfield. That's a turnover. Dylan Cardwell hounded underneath. Well, if you like defense, you're going to love this uh, operation right here. Corn just goes around. He sees the mismatch. He's got Cardwell on him, and he goes by him. And he was smart enough with his left hand to get it up above. Another excellent shot blocker. They got two of the best shot blockers in the country on one team. Oh, a good on. look for Johnson. He couldn't finish it, and then a foul on Braxton Mia. Oh, that's a big that's call. That's number two. Vern Harris, I didn't see it. That is a huge call. We talked about how important it was for Braxton. I hate to end it. That's Braxton's fault. Don't get me wrong, but Corrin's got to finish. 34 uh, at the bottom. Uh, a little bit came over the top, but that's a play on very often, and Dylan Cardwell wouldn't mind it. He's a big, strong guy, but we talked about uh, he's fourth in the SEC in block shots. Janai Broom is one, uh, and they're also both top 20 in the NCAA. Well, I had a good look, but Katie John or rather uh, Jalen Williams just threw it a little too high for Cardwell. Johnson had to sit with two fouls. Mia now sitting with two fouls. Menefield bouncing his way to a clean look, maybe, but could not get it anywhere near the rim. And then a foul on uh, Jackson Grant. No, Grant was out of bounds contacting the ball. Both goes over. teams really struggling guy to run offense against their opponent. I mean, they just are not comfortable. They're having difficulty making passes. They're not getting the ball where they want to get it. Uh, so that's a problem. Uh, as good as Keon Minifield is, and he's a, uh, really going to be a big-time player, Except Jasper's one of the best defensive guards in the country. Broom. Trying to get around Jackson Grant. And he'll go to the line. A foul on Washington. And that one is on Jamal Bay, his first. And Washington bench looking for saying, hey, they got us for going over the top. That's what these guys are doing down here. Uh, that's at least three offensive rebounds for the Tigers. And again, you got to put a body on him and you got to put a body on him pretty far away. Truth is, some of these misses are so bad, guy. There's long rebounds, and it's not the inside guy that's getting the rebound. Uh, it's the guy that's a little bit further away. Uh, just to finish that that uh, point on uh, Zepp Jasper, he played four years at College of Charleston. He is a tremendous defender. Really, really big time defender. 34 starts last year for the Tigers. Here's Jamal Bay pushing it up the floor. A little contact. Bay gets the rebound and he's fouled. Ooh, he no, a flop. Technical is called. After the miss on the attempt, Michael Irving indicated a flop on Trey Donaldson. Watch number three here. Is that a flop? That was close. It was borderline. But uh, the call was made. Again, it's a good rule. There's no warnings anymore. Uh, first time you do it, it's penalized. It's a Class B technical. It's going to be one shot. And the ball remains with the Huskies. They let you play. They finish the play. And when one team has secured possession, if it's a shot, then you continue. Bruce Pearl's talking to his guys. He's an animated. Talking to Alan Flanagan saying, hey, you guys got to defend without fouling. Benjamin makes the free throw. He's the best in the entire Pac-12 conference, over 90% in the free throw line. Tough Warren shot. Johnson feeling it. Tough shot. UW 0 of 5 now from 3. That's a freshman shot right there. Except Jasper trying to direct traffic. Seven minutes gone by here in the first half. Not a lot of offense so far. Three made field goals combined. A let's go Auburn chant emanating here from the Tiger fans. And there are plenty. That'll get the dog pack going, hopefully. Brooks has taken just one shot so far in this game. The leading scorer for Washington. Manyfield tried to thread it and turned it over. 
Got to stay on your feet when you penetrate. That's a turnover about to happen. Treor was able to corral for a moment. Ball still loose and out of bounds. Bajima while contacting the ball. The effort applauded. Auburn will keep possession. You're going to see a lot of those plays. Looks like a rugby scrum where you got two teams scrambling for the ball. These two teams get after it defensively. They create steals. They create turnovers for their opponents. And truth be told, um, both of them will turn the ball over on occasion. <laughs> now Menafield will check back in for Johnson as Broom inbounds with 20 seconds. He wants it back underneath. Alan Flanagan could not connect in the corner with Jasper. Bruce Pearl's got his head between his hands, just shaking his head. <laughs> All he's been talking about at both practices, we turned it over too much in Los Angeles, and we fouled too much. And they're starting the game with turnovers and fouls again. Tough inbound spot for oh, Bay, but it's it gets hard to, to get it in against this team. Washington, one of 11 shooting so far. Tough shot for Bajima, and there is Donaldson. Getting into the lane is not the end of the problem. Uh, Broom running easy. the floor for the dunk. Uh, that that off-balance shot ignited the fast break. Many fill. Exploded to the basket to lay it in. Night and day difference. You saw what many did that time compared to Badgerman's shot and Corrin Johnson's shot where they left their feet, really weren't sure where they were going to go. Jesper, 14 on the shot clock for Auburn. Broom connects. That's a big shot against the zone. Yeah, he's the problem because he, not only does he have the good touch inside, but he's a willing passer. A little wild at times, but he's dangerous with the ball in the middle. Talk about dangerous. That pass. P.J. Fuller. Fifth turnover for the Huskies. Um, you see the high percentage shots. We haven't seen a lot of them, but this is beating them down the floor. Trey Donaldson finds one of the reasons they're ranked as high as they are, but that's going to happen uh, as we get closer to New Year's. That's they're going to start beating each other, and this conference is going to be a lot. Not going to be upsets. There's going to be a lot of unexpected wins. Nine minutes gone by here in the first. Both teams struggling to convert. Both teams under 30%. Well, Auburn's under 30. UW is at 15% right now. 20. Yeah. Here's P.J. Fuller, and Washington is still being shut out from three-point range. That was a good look, though, by P.J. Fuller. Another one who's, I call him a streaky shooter. He's shot it well at times, uh, other times not so well. And they're getting the ball into Janai Broom too easily. Open look, in and out. A problem. Tee it up again, Wendell Green. And again off the mark. Offensive rebound again for Auburn. That is going to bite UW. They've got to get that under control. Uh, that time it was Yoan Treor. The heralded freshman from France. A lot of traffic inside for Brooks and gets to the side of the backboard. You're right, Coach. It's not just the percentage. It's the, 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 the miss. A lot of misses not even close. Offensive foul called against Wendell Green. Let's put it this way, guy. Every pass and most of the shots are under duress. Nothing is coming easily. They can't even make a pass to, you know, to enter the end of the offense. When they drive to the basket, there's at least two people coming after them. Uh, I like the fact that the refs are letting them play a little bit also. Bruce Pearl might disagree with me. He thinks there's too many fouls. But both these teams want to defend and be physical. Wendell Green still on the floor with his second foul. As Brooks gets his first field goal of the night. Wendell Green's got to be careful. As good as Trey Donaldson played Sunday in Los Angeles, they need Wendell Green on the floor. Battling an ankle injury, suffered two games ago. Only played 12 minutes the other day against SC, and now maybe that'll get him going. The and one, P.J. Fuller committed the foul. First bucket for Green, and he'll go to the line. Nice pass by Janai Bloom. I'm really impressed. Janai Bloom played his first two years at Moorhead State, and he was the defensive player of the year in the Ohio Valley Conference. There's the pass right there. He knows how to play basketball. He was also first team all OVC. 
his freshman and sophomore year. Uh, and he, we talked about he leads the SEC uh, in block shots, and he's also number five, I believe, in the NCAA. Three blocks a game. This team has had 11 blocks mm. twice already this year in games. Can't finish it off. Badge him uh, with a rebound. Free throw shooting a problem for, or has been a problem for Auburn. That was a good cut, by the way. Wendell Green cut to the basket. Jedi Broom found him. Leor Berman has checked in. The seldom use. He's defending the ball right now. He's for a good Auburn. three point shooter. Tough shot. But maybe Brooks has gotten going now. Well, this, this is the pattern for you, Dub. When things are not going well, Keon Brooks has to step up, and he's doing just that. A one-point game. Nice pass. And a nice finish for Chris Moore. Unexpectedly, Chris Moore is leading the way for them with his scoring. He's done a really good job. Again, a good pass by Janai Broom. Moore has seven. And Medifield chases down a rebound. Bruce Pearl thought he stepped out of bounds. Medifield up and over. No. Brooks couldn't corral and outbreak the Tigers. They got numbers if they want to go. Yeah, they do want to go. Williams gets it up ahead to Broom. You've got, they have to secure that rebound. They had a chance. Mini made a good play, and then they had a hand on the second one. You've got to grab the ball against this team because that will get their fast break going. Brooks can't get it to go down, and here comes... Auburn again trying to apply some pressure. Leo Berman is a very good three-point shooter. They're getting the ball inside too much. Mike Hopkins not happy with that. That's not a strong shot by Janai Bloom. He thinks he was fouled, but you're not going to get a call when you shoot it like that. And Mike Hopkins will take a timeout in a five-point game. 7.37 to go here in the first. Well, the alpha man has stepped up. That's Keon Brooks. He's got the matchup with Bloom. Gave him a little bit too good line already. That's sweet. Tigers started two for 12. Since then, five for nine. So far, there hasn't been a since then for Washington. They're four for 21 and one for eight from three. Their since so far this year has been since the first half, right? They've won five that's, games that they trailed that's at That's a great time. point. Excellent point. They have been a different team in the second half. Out of the Washington timeout, a good look for Johnson. Yeah, Corin Johnson did get a good look. They, they got a secure defense right now. They need to defend and rebound. They're giving up too many offensive rebounds also. Got to watch Leo Berman. He's an excellent three-point shooter. He's a walk-on. Got a gold medal in the Maccabee games this summer in Israel. Oh, he's open in the corner. This is only the fifth game he's appeared in. Yeah, but he, he does. They, they, they'll go to him. And he can shoot it. Williams will let it fly with two on the shot clock, yeah. and he snaps the net. 28-second possession and nope, not enough pressure on that shot. That was a good look, especially considering it was with two seconds on the clock. Big matchup for Jalen Williams today. Tough shot on the other end for many field. Four of 23 now are the Huskies. And there's a kick by Brooks. Yeah, it's, there's been a couple of these really solid defensive possessions by the Huskies, but you got to do it for all 30. Uh, Corin Johnson had a little more pressure on the ball than I thought, but again, you see he's giving away size uh, to Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams is a good player. He had 20, eight boards, three blocks. He shot eight for 11 against Georgia State. They're looking for him to step up. When you lose two players like Jabari Smith Jr. and Walker Kessler got a lot of guys who are complimentary players. It's time for somebody to step up and become the best player on this team. Those are two All-Americans who got drafted in the first round. Turnover for Auburn, the seventh of the night for the Tigers. The problem is not on the defensive end. That's a good look. Bajima, a rare clean look for him tonight. Donaldson with a head of steam. Williams got another After that fall you referenced it before guy he took a terrible fall against USC right on his shoulder Did not practice here Monday night, but Tuesday he was out there practicing and <laughs> not showing any effects so far Williams with eight points and a couple of threes 
Dogs got to get back in this before the half. This is not a team you get way behind on. Fuller can't get the bounce. One for ten, I believe. From, from the three. three That's right. Even I, I can figure that percent out, guy. It's not. You remember the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just about five minutes to go here, first oh, half. Inside again. Tough matchup. Oh, Lane, good job. Offensive rebound for Williams. Williams doing a little bit of everything. Now Broome. Another offensive board. Flanagan. And one. The basket counts. Mike Hopkins talking to Cohen Johnson. You can't allow penetration and you got to get in there and get they need five people on the glass. Langston Wilson should realize Broom's a lefty. See, Corin Johnson didn't. Oh, that's terrible defense. He didn't get in front of the man. He waved at him when he went by. And on top of that, they caused a foul. Langston Wilson's got to realize that Broom is left-handed. You can't let him go to his left. And another lefty should certainly know that. This team has a bunch of left, three of them, and they all play. Jalen Williams is a lefty. Janai Broom is a lefty. And then off the bench, uh, Dylan Cardwell, who's in right now, giving Broom a rest, is another lefty. How about Braxton Mia, who got that early two fouls coming back right here? Well, we said early in the game, you know, it's so different without Frank Kepner, who, by the way, had successful surgery for that ACL uh, just a couple of days ago, and it went very well. But it's gonna look, he's looking at a long rehab and hopefully a return next year uh, to the Huskies. But Braxton Mia has got to stay on the Four. Bajuma misses everything. Wow. This is wild. Yeah, Cole Bajuma, again, he's been more consistent this year and he's really improved putting the ball on the floor. But they need, they being the Huskies, they need Bajuma and Jamal Bay to make the open three. They're the two best shooters on the team. The freshman guards are taking a lot of shots today and not converting it. Dylan Cardwell gives it up and Williams converts a 14-0 run for Auburn. Yeah, and again, ball in the middle of the zone and another lefty who's a good passer. Jalen Williams knows what to do with it. They're not looking to shoot it. Those guys are looking to pass the ball when they get in that foul line area where the dotted line used to be. Brooks, it doesn't go down. Freshman. But Donaldson's the quarterback. Got to throw been better passes than that. Over five minutes since the Huskies last made a field goal. Yeah, yeah Auburn's the quad ended there, but a lot of people took the opportunity to come out to Los Angeles and Seattle and uh, tell you what, um, sightseeing has not slowed the Tigers down no. at all. This 345 we've got left here in the first half is really important for the Huskies. They got to get this down with more manageable number than it is right now. Auburn on a 14-0 run, and there's a misconnection. Uh, that's not the way to get it done. Uh, nothing upsets a coach. Well, nothing upset me more as a coach when you have a timeout and then you come out and turn the ball over. They are O for their last 10 shots, the Huskies, and for the whole game, entire game. They've only got four points in the paint. When they have got it inside, they have not been able to finish against this excellent shot-blocking team. 16 paint points for Auburn. There's a steal for P.J. Fuller. And the basket counts. He's fouled. P.J. Fuller has had a knack for doing that since he's come here from transferring from TCU. Talked about how good a player won a state championship at Nathan Hale. Also won one at Garfield and then finished that Finley prep. He saw that pass coming. He goes down. Leo Berman with a mistake right there. Let him shoot it. He's got a breakaway. Don't give him the extra shot. That also gives you double chance to press if they want to. And I'll be surprised if Mike Hopkins, well, Zach will we'll never know, got to make the free throws when you've dug yourself a hole. Sixth team foul against Auburn as well. Yeah, they've done a better job. Remember early on they were uh, accumulating the fouls. They've yeah. settled down. There's another turn. Ooh, should have been a turnover. Good job by Badgerman. Cardwell inside. Flanagan. Good and job. Mia on the board after the miss from Jalen Williams. Take your time. You're not going to catch up right now, but just get it to a more manageable number. That usually means Keon Brooks. Get underneath, Braxton. Here's Brooks. Cardwell on him. 6'11 freshman Brooks challenged.
difficult shot. Cardwell did well. Yeah, he's upset. He thought he was fouled again. He's played five games already against the Tigers, and he was a Wildcat for University of Kentucky, Keon Brooks Jr. Ball really moving for the Tigers. And there's two more for Jalen Williams. He's, yeah. got a lot, he's got 12. Braxton Mia made it too easy for him by leaving his feet. That usually gets him in foul trouble, but he's got a, he's seven foot with a long wingspan. He's got to let them, you know, make him shoot over him. Don't leave your feet. Fuller, difficult, went into the body, the physical Cardwell. Mia saves it to nobody, and Auburn will get it back. Never liked the word discombobulated, but I think it fits right now. Uh, UW just all out of sorts. It's all because of the Auburn defense, which is excellent. Uh, they're playing hungry. The last thing they want to do is come out to the West Coast and go 0-2 when they get ready for uh, conference play, which starts with the University of Florida and I think Georgia right after that. Yep, they that. go to Georgia, yeah. host Florida, go to Georgia. And then the Razorbacks come into town, so that's a tough start. Here we go with the turnovers. Number it's, 10 for Auburn. It's really interesting because Janai Broom has the ball. He's 14 feet away from the basket, wide open, not even thinking about shooting the ball. He's trying to make that high-low pass, which has been good to them so far. Under two minutes to go here, first half. This is the largest lead of the night for Auburn. Langston Wilson in part, partly because, come on, Cole Batchum has got to knock it down. Trey Donaldson, you cannot do that. Bruce Pearl's going to tell him not as politely as I did when I was coaching. Uh, he's screaming at him, the freshman. You can't do that. Everything's going our way, and you follow a guy. They can't make a shot. They're like one for 12, and you put a guy on the free throw line. Not just a guy. Excuse me for using that term, guy. Uh, but the best free throw shooter in the Pac-12. I don't think it's derogatory. That's okay. <laughs> well, Badger makes the first to three. Such a good free throw shooter, Cole Badgerman. That'll get him over 90 right now. Make me look good, please, Cole. Not easy to do. He usually doesn't hit the rim on his free throws. He's that good a shooter. Uh, good move by Mike Hopkins. Not just because me is struggling, but he doesn't want him to get his third foul Took here out. in the first half. We've got Langston Wilson in to hold the fourth. All three for Pajima. Washington has more free throws made than field goals made right now. Yep. This is an offensive-defensive sub right now. They're looking... Uh, for our young man uh, to step up and give him something. That's Jackson Grant. There's the pressure. Auburn was not good against USC's pressure on Sunday, and they're not good tonight. Oh, Mike, you know, Hop was open. Flanagan saw him. People forget Mike Hopkins. Tell you how long ago Mike Hopkins played, and I, I shouldn't say that, Hop, but I was coaching at Seton Hall. Mike Hopkins was playing for Syracuse. That's how long I've known Mike Hopkins. Mike Hopkins was an excellent player. Talking about players, these two staffs would have a great basketball game. There are some big-time players sitting on both benches, coaches. Bruce Pearl is not one of those great-time <laughs> players. He's a great coach. Wasn't a great player. And Chris Morris is in the stands also. Another great player from all Auburn, so uh, we, we could have a heck of a game with the coaches. We went through it today with Bruce Pearl. He said he thought Quincy Pondexter would lead both staffs. Well, Coupon's still young. Yeah, he's young. He's going to get it done. Pass it. Good. You didn't have an angle. Good decision by Keon Brooks. You got a chance to get it down to 10 or less. Oh, bad pass. Born. And Freshman a turnover. Pass. Auburn responds to a turnover with a turnover. Yeah. Hmm. That's when the score just looks at the uh, person sitting next to him and says, now we'll just let it go. We'll just call it a, a ball out of bounds. <laughs> Instead of two turnovers, maybe a steal. What was that? Like you can't even Off keep setting. track. Yeah, you can't keep track with this team. Corn Johnson's got to settle down. Both of the freshman guards for UW are playing like freshmen. Shot clock was low. enough time to take a couple oh, of dribbles. Fly. Oh, I love it, Jamal. How about this? It's under 10 now. Maybe a sign for the Huskies that the tide has turned. It's a big possession for Auburn. Husky crowd getting back into it. And Badgham of the board after Flanagan missed. Bigger possession for you, Dub. This would be a huge lift for them. Eight, Settle down, Corn. Eight-second differential game clock and shot clock. Good hop. Hop's telling you Everybody down along the baseline. He wants Keon with the ball. Corin Johnson go, gets Dan. fouled. And the basket yep. counts. Mistake. 
That's a mental mistake. Yeah, great shot blocking team, sure. But you got to recognize when the ball's on the board. You can't touch it after it's hit the backboard. These are mistakes that Auburn's making. Janai Broom, one of the best shot blockers in the country, but not after the ball has touched the rim. They're just handing you dub points on a night when so far they've really struggled. Big free throw. I think they'll press if they can knock this in. Corin Johnson needs to make this shot. He hasn't made a lot of free throws this year. He hasn't attempted a lot. He's now four, five of eight on the season. No Not press. a run for the Huskies. Shot clock is off. Six-point game. You believe that guy? No. Completely turned it around in this last 345 since the timeout. It was a 15-point game with 220 left in this half. Wendell Green finds Williams. He's been good from there, and he gets fouled on the three. Corin Johnson just committed the foul with 1.1 on the clock, and Williams is going to shoot three free throws. That's what fresh, yeah, opportunity to score. Hate to say it, also an opportunity for Auburn if they choose to press full court. Doesn't look like they are. They got three guys back uh, talking to Stephen Pearl. Bruce's assistant, son and assistant. Jay Williams, a 62% free throw shooter, misses the first. Four in this game with 12. Only man in double figures. Uh, Gets the second, still has one more. That ends the 9-0 run. DJ Fuller coming in, my namesake, I guess, <laughs> maybe to, to make the uh, inbounds pass. Cole Badgham is a very good shooter. I think that Hop might be concerned whether they can get this ball in because now Auburn's up. Miss. Ooh. Two of three. Oh, soft pickup. 3.4 seconds left. Get it, it in. Got to get it in. Here's Johnson. Brooks. Ooh. Almost got it to go. Good execution right there. They got a good look out of that. Washington has five wins this ceiling season when trailing at the half. And they'll have to try and do it again in the Alamo Bowl next week. Good for him. That's a great statement. I love the fact that he's coming back. I'll tell you what, I hate the fact that he was not in New York for the Heisman because nobody played better than him. Some of the other guys might have played as well. Nobody played better than Michael Penix this year. Well, he'll have some buzz next season when he returns for Kalen DeBoer's squad. We'll uh, re-inbound the ball after that was knocked How away. How about him and Caleb Williams? Are you kidding me? How yep. uh, unfortunately, we're... Sending uh, eventually Kel Williams out of the uh, out of the conference, but uh, while he's here, let's enjoy him. Now you see the Huskies; they've been a second half team, plus 87 in the second half. They've five halftime deficits have turned into wins, but that pass turns into a turnover for Keon Brooks. And just reached those long arms up and gobbled it up. Chris Moore had a fast start for. Auburn, he has yeah, seven, seven points. He had quick seven points, and after that, it was uh, mainly J uh, Jalen Williams showing the way. Wendell Green had one bucket in the first half, two points for him, and no assists for the point guard handling the ball right now for Auburn. Four still... on the shot clock, oh, and boy. Jasper hits a three. Yeah, zip Jasper, that's a big shot. I still don't think uh, Wendell Green is quite right. He hurt his ankle two games ago, and it was obviously hindered against USC. Uh, he's not limping, but I don't think he's 100%. Only played 12 minutes last week. He's under 10 minutes right now. There's a foul on Chris Moore, his first. Helps up P.J. Fuller. Cannot let this margin get much bigger. Yes, they're a good second-half team, but uh, yeah, just a trip. Inadvertent right there. Chris Moore tried to help, but uh, P.J. Fuller went right over his ankle. Tough oh. shot. Second yeah. bucket for Fuller tonight. Yeah, he lost his footing with his right foot. He kind of slipped in the paint and was able to regain his balance. Good finish. Auburn led by as many as 15 points in the first half. A 14-0 run was a 14-2 run when Washington went on a 9-0 run of its own near the end of the first half to get it down to an eight-point deficit at the break. They want Williams in the middle of the zone again. Up hey. top. There's Janai Broom, who has eight points. Yeah, and there's Wendell Green making his presence felt. The penetration opened up the lob for the easy finish. And the Huskies get Brooks going. There's a foul. 
on Auburn. Second team foul as we look back at the lob. Well, what, what Wendell Green did is stayed on the floor until he knew what he had. Saw a little bit of over penetration in the first half. The Huskies a couple of times got the penetration and then got in too deep, left the you know left the ground and nowhere to go. Green kind of let the defense dictate what he was going to do. Got to get it in. This is a tough team to get the ball inbounds against. By the way, foul was on Moore, two on him. Here's Brooks with a shoulder, and he gets the bounce. Tough shot. He's got seven points now, Brooks, on three of ten shooting. I'm looking at my stat sheet. Corn Johnson started. Was there a quick sub again, or did he start and play Sebastian? Quick sub. Yeah. That rebound, good. Mia the board. Braxton's got to be on the floor. He's got to take away those lob passes, which they already got one of, and control the glass. Johnson explodes to the basket for two. The freshman has been ready to play tonight, and he's got seven points. He loves that left-hand finish inside. He's had the penetration. He's not been able to finish as well. Oh, Wendell Green rattles in a triple. With all the points in the paint, the last thing the Huskies need is some deep shots to start going down. This is a dangerous team. you got a number of players shooting under 30% guy who historically earlier in their careers, colleges, have shot much better. So you kind of feel they're going to shoot better eventually for Bruce Pearl. A little deep there for Braxton. Easy. Mia. Hampered by two early fouls in the first half, but maybe this will get him going offensively. That's, That's a, his first field goal tonight. That's a heck of a move. Chris Moore saying, what did I do? He's got three quick fouls, does more here, all in the second half, Coach. Yeah, exactly. Chris Moore is an important player. Sometimes it doesn't show in the stat sheet. Today you can't because he scored early. You can see it. He's talking to Michael Irving right now. That was a very insincere handshake. Uh, <laughs> You're not buying it? Well, because he's going to the bench with, with an extra foul. So he's going to try and make up with Michael Irving and invest in something later. <laughs> Mia at the line. And he can't complete the three-point play. So good move inside. Stops. Stops weren't a problem in the first half. They've been a problem early in the first four minutes until the media timeout. Uh, Auburn raining down threes. Flanagan. Green. Oh, Fuller went down, saved the ball with his feet for Mia. Chance to get it to six before we get to that media timeout. Six or five. Brooks getting bodied by Williams, and that draws a foul on Jalen Williams. It's 14 fouls already, guy. Half starting the way the first half started. It is. Uh, aggressive defense by Auburn, but a little bit too aggressive. Bruce Pearl seen this movie before. All those fouls in the second half against USC. 15 fouls in the second half. Wow, what a finish. Corin Johnson having a really good game. Excellent sub by Mike Hopkins. Four for seven from the field for the freshman from Garfield. His nine points lead the Huskies right now. He averages five a game. Dog pack coming to life. He can make that shot. Green. Bodies into Mia and draws the foul on Mia. That's three on Braxton Mia in that's, the game. That's a big play right there by Wendell Green Jr. Corin Johnson, look at that left hook from year to year, who you're going to have. Uh, scary to think what the Huskies would be without Keon Brooks Jr. Seven points in the game, as you saw, one, uh, two points in the second half. Yes. Uh, Wendell Green Jr. has made two really good plays. He broke the defense down and got that lob pass to Janai Groom early. But that time, he did something more important. Got the third foul on Braxton Mia. Braxton's got to just stay on the ground, get his hands up. How about Mia remaining in the game with three fouls? Well, he's got to play. He's got to learn to play. There's no question. They're not going to win without him. Got them both. Wendell Green has steadily settled in, at least from a scoring standpoint. He now has seven points in the game. Oh, he's too good a player. Five points in the second half for Green. Huskies have not had trouble getting the ball in against the pressure, which is a good sign. Uh, Jamal Bay 
Possession arrow, it. it'll go to Auburn on the alternating possession on the tie-up. That penetration we talked about, they're getting penetration, but they're not getting anywhere. Auburn's doing a better job helping against the penetration. You saw what happened last time with Wendell Green Jr. He got in there and created the foul on, on Braxton Mia. So uh, Husky's penetration has not led to good things the way Auburn's pen dribble penetration has. Green thought about it, got fuller in the air. Katie Johnson back to Green. Auburn's been comfortable in late shot clock situations so far tonight. They haven't had much choice. Good look for Green with Fuller closing out on him, but it gets knocked over to Johnson. Who knocks down the triple? No secret. They knew what they had to do. We talked to Mike Hopkins before the game. He talked to his team about it yesterday. They've got to keep Auburn off the offensive glass. They've not even come close to doing that. First, eight, eight rebounds already on the offensive boards for Auburn. First bucket of the game for Katie Johnson. Now here's Bay. Created some space, but then he couldn't connect, and Johnson the board. Johnson ran into Mia's back, and then he found the dump off to Cardwell for the dunk. That took a while, but again, you saw penetration, but the Auburn penetration led to the dunk. Too easy. KD Johnson did a good job. He knew when it or not has been better. Right. Well, they've scored 10 points in this half. Exactly. Which, you know, was well ahead of the pace in the first half. The problem is that UW has allowed 15 points yeah. to Auburn in this half. Well, that's it. This is going to be interesting because they've not had trouble yet getting the ball in, and it's not easy to get it in against this team. Here's Corin Johnson, who's been a spark plug for the Huskies tonight. He's got nine points. There is Mia running the floor. And one. He gets fouled by Jalen Williams on the dunk. Corin Johnson with the big play. He was under control. Yes, he pushed it against the pressure, which you want him to do. But this time, he made a good pass. He found Braxton Mia. Mia with a nice finish inside. Kind of ducked under his man and then got the finish. Corin Johnson that time avoided contact, found his teammate. Jalen Williams doesn't like the call. Does it count for hanging on the rim if you're only like six inches off the ground while you're hanging? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Free throws they can't afford. They've dug a big hole. You're going to need all those free throws. Auburn fouling is kind of how Washington got back in the game at the end of the first half. And Auburn now has five team fouls. Green. Oh, he's just taking control of this game. Yeah, Corin, uh, you can't foul. Uh, uh, jump shooters. Fouling a jump shooter. Mike Hopkins has Keon Minifield coming in. It may be freshman for freshman right now. As good as Corn Johnson is playing, they can't afford those defensive mistakes. And clearly one of the problems here in the last couple minutes is the penetration by Green Jr. and Johnson. Both very good, experienced players. You know, it's interesting. Janai Broom and Wendell Green Jr. both started in the Ohio Valley Conference. Uh, Wendell at Eastern Kentucky when they were still in the conference, and Janai Broom at Moorhead State, and they have just not missed a beat since they stepped up to the SEC. Janai Broom was the OVC Defensive Player of the Year last year. Green, two, yeah, excuse me, guy, two-time first team all OVC as a freshman and a sophomore. And well, Green has been really good. This is second year at Auburn. How about this? The two true freshmen on the floor together now, Corin ah, Johnson were, yep. and Menifield for the Huskies. Uh, take care of the ball. It's all right to penetrate. Just make sure we're getting good shots every trip down. Good defense there by Green. Here's Brooks. Steps into a three. Tough possession. That was a good defensive possession. Really didn't go anywhere with the ball. It only changed sides of the floor one time. Green weaving his way. And it's followed and tapped in by Cardwell. Too much penetration again. They're living in the paint. Other than those two made threes, the two small point guards, or two guards, if you will, are living in the purple paint. Now here's Brooks, who has seven points in the game. Hardwell closing out, and Mia the offensive board. So Johnson will let fly, but that's well off the mark. Yeah, it, philosophy is obvious for Auburn. They know, keep Keon Brooks outside. If he beats him with jump shots, so be it. But don't let him get in close. And they're denying his penetration, something that UW is not doing recently. Flanagan driving in. Creates an open look for Williams. 
We got to find something in transition or off the defense or on offensive rebounds. They got the offensive rebound last time and couldn't convert to three. This half court offense has been a challenge for the Huskies, as it is against most teams when they line up against Auburn Tigers. Here's Mia. Can't get the wow. bounce. Good shot. The rim was unkind. Good play, Braxton. Ooh. That's off of Auburn. Good steal oh. interception, really, from Mia, and then he just threw it back. Hopefully, yeah, it would he, hit something. He was fortunate. And it hit Cardwell. You don't save it under the other team's bucket unless you can see who you're saving it to, but Braxton Mia with good hustle and ended up a good play. Knocked it off Cardwell's shin. 13 turnovers for Auburn, nine turnovers for Washington tonight. All year, turnovers and the turnover margin has been a big plus for Mike Hopkins' team, but they've got to convert off the turnovers. they got to get some live ball turnovers, score some plays for a bad pass by Corin Johnson. Nice. Gets it up. Good hustle. Now back to Badgema, free for a three, and he's short. Well, Badgema and Jamal Bay. Struggling from outside you would think the Huskies are going to need some threes to win this game They are two for 16 from downtown team in Washington is on December 30th here in Seattle yeah, And in January 1 UCLA comes calling and then a tough trip to the desert uh, January 5 at Arizona January 8 at ASU. It's not getting easier. There's their trap They love to go out of the two three zone especially after timeouts Trey Donaldson, who you just mentioned, into the game for Auburn, giving Wendell Green a breather. And out of the timeout, Katie Johnson with a tough shot. And this is the largest lead of the night now for Auburn. Well, the good news is there's a lot of time left. The bad news is they've gone sour on both ends, offense and defense. Oh, and that comes out. He hung on the rim. It was in. If he doesn't hang on the rim, it goes in. Langston Wilson couldn't keep it down. Broom. Mm. A little body language. But he's cutting up the zone. Uh, the guard's got to do a better job denying that pass. You can't pass the ball from the top of the zone right to the man in the middle of the zone. Many field. Broom closes out and he gets the bucket. Good finish. Auburn shooting 67% in this second half. Well, that's the quality of your looks, guy. They're getting great looks every time down. Penetration or pass in the middle, and when they've had to settle for a three, they've knocked it down. Look out. Up top, good catch there by Treor. He played a little bit in the first half. Yohan Treor. Donaldson lost it, but it comes over to Flanagan. Boom. Mismatch inside. And then he goes over the back of Bajima, fighting for the offensive rebound. For Broom, that's his second foul. It's the sixth team. I'm really impressed. I, you know, obviously a mistake there. He should have made the shot, but he gets after it. Uh, he's some player. Morehead State has got to feel horrible. Uh, you can't play much better. And he played for Morehead for two years, and they lose him, and he hasn't missed a beat. Uh, he's going to be a real impact player. For Bruce Pearl. Two rebounds shy of a double double tonight for Broom. He's made his first three on Sunday. First three point shot he's made in his career. Look out. That one poked away. Last touch by Brooks. And for Washington, it's his 10th turnover. KD Johnson, good help. Got his hands in there. Again, these players are used to, I mean, they had a lot of success. They had a great team last year, and these players were allowed to be complimentary players, if you will. Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler showing the way. Now it's their turn to step up, but they've got a lot of minutes, a lot of experience, and they've made a living off the transfer portal themselves. Third most wins in Auburn history last year. 28, no? 28 wins. Wow. Bruce Pearl, the SEC Coach of the Year. Third time he's won that award. Not a good coach, a great coach. Good, Braxton rebound. protected. Been successful wherever he was in Southern Indiana, at Milwaukee, at Tennessee, and now, of course, at Auburn. Bay getting inside and he gets the foul. Good job. Good aggressive play there by Jamal Bay. I took a shot on the side. His left temple there. I tell you what. I'm shaking out the cobwebs. Foul was on uh, Berman. We spent three days in Las Vegas with the NBA Academy uh, guy watching them, uh, the players play there. And the Tarkanian Classic was held at Jamal Bay's high school, at Bishop Dorman High School, where he won four consecutive state championships. 
That is the first free throw. Got his bell rung a little bit there. He's a Gatorade Player of the Year in Nevada. Playing for Grant Rice. Uh, Dave Rice, the former assistant here, former coach at UNLV. His brother Grant had a run of like seven or eight state championships at Bishop Thorne. And also some national championships in football at some powerhouse athletically. Four points right now for Bay, who averages seven. That ball knocked out of bounds on the inbounds by Bay. Good hands by Jamal Bay. The, he, the fact that he's been struggling offensively, he still gets those steals. He's very active. Uh, leads the Huskies with 17 steals. That's seventh in the Pac-12 uh, in steals. He gets his hand on a lot of balls. Really an ideal player uh, up on top. Uh, very similar to, uh, not as big and long as, as Matisse Thibel, but very impactful on that zone. There's another kick on the inbounds pass. He's active. They need he and Cole Badgerman, though, to knock down some threes. Guy, they can't win games in, in the Pac-12 conference without better three-point shooting. Bay, who had, you know, such a great three-point shooting year a couple of years ago. He should do over 40 or close to it. Yep. Led the Pac-12 in three-point percentage. Jalen Williams just checked back into the game for Auburn. Under 10 minutes remaining here in regulation. Well, Trey Donaldson is close to the midcourt line. Freshman on freshman with Ian yeah. Manyfield. Good freshman. Here's Broom, and he just gets... Oh, oh he gets called for an offensive foul. Bruce Pearl shaking his head. Yeah, he's looking at, at Janai saying, yeah, you stuck your arm out. Look at him. Get back. We're up 16 points, man. Get back. Don't chirp with the officials. Does he hook? There it is. Clear cut. The right arm. Got it behind Langston Wilson. Watch. It goes right behind Langston Wilson's head. Excellent call. I don't know whether that was Michael Irving or Vern on the baseline that made the call, but it was a very good call. Bruce Pearl right away said, look at Janai Brooks is talking to Vern Harris. Bruce, Bruce Pearl's telling him, yeah, you stuck your arm out. That's why he called it. Three on Broom, 18 fouls now for Auburn. Badgema gets free. Thank and he you, hits. Cole. Needed that. First three of the night for Badgema. That's huge. If he could get some going, that'll loosen up the defense, boy. Just not getting back and getting matched up. Got to get back quicker. Broom Mike now. Hopkins telling, excuse me, guy. Mike Hopkins telling Braxton, Braxton, you got to run back, especially against this team because Janai Broom does an excellent job in transition. Delay a game warning there. Yeah. On Auburn. Bruce Pearl's out. He's the sixth man on the floor. Well onto the court. <laughs> Mike Hopkins upset. They're not where they're supposed to be on the offense. Badgema just couldn't hold it, and yeah. Donaldson came away. He's never under control. Talking about oh. run, running the floor. Really, you can't get back. When you have a live ball turnover like they just had with Cole Badgema, it's really difficult to get back. Huskies have got to get under control. Michael Irving's looking at KD Johnson. said, you got to get under control, too. Good throw ahead by Trey Donaldson. How many baskets does Broom have in transition? Seems like all his points are dunks in transition. He's got 14 points to go with eight boards and three assists, or four assists. The foul was on uh, Katie Johnson. It's his third and the ninth team foul against Auburn. Denied Brooks, we're talking about the number five shot blocker in the NCAA and the best shot blocker in the SEC. Uh, forget what he does on the offensive end. That is a very talented young man. Look at those numbers. They're good. Fuller gets two free throws. Well, they obviously cannot afford to trade baskets anymore. In the beginning, they were getting outscored. Now at least they're trading baskets. Trading baskets not going to get it done. They've got to get stops on the defensive end. They are playing better offensively, but not defensively. Auburn breaks the press easily. That leaves Berman loose for a three. He's in there for one reason, to shoot threes. His second of the year. Neal wants it inside on Broom. Here's that matchup. Broom in the air, and he denies Braxton Mia, and then it goes out of bounds off of Washington. 
Well, this is what happens when you beat the press in the backcourt. They tried to trap in the backcourt, but it wasn't there. So now you got me in favor of the Tigers. Second chance points. A bad mismatch. 11 to 3. And then a surprising one. Fast break points. 10 4. 8 of. Janai Broom's 14 points are fast break points, and six of them are dunks. Wow. He's just beating them down the floor and getting easy shots. If you told the Huskies they'd shoot 50% in the second half, you felt good about that. There's a bucket out of the timeout for Jalen Williams. But the problem is that Auburn is over 65%. They're 60, almost 7% in the second half shooting. Well, our viewers remember the dotted line they used to, you know, half circle underneath the free throw line. They've had the ball at that dotted line the entire game, and they are just chewing the Huskies up. That's Oh, that's not a good call. That's on Brooks, and that's Keon Brooks' first frustrating night. Yeah, for they, him. they've done an excellent job defending him. I thought he actually moved sideways. Vern Harris is a better official than I am. Let's watch it. I thought he moved his feet. Yeah, he sold it. Did a good job selling it. Too much uh, contact with that left shoulder. Keon Brooks' left shoulder hits the left shoulder of that Jalen Williams that drew the play. It was. Yeah, it could have gone either way, but uh, I didn't think he got totally in front of him, but way too much contact from Keon Brooks, Jr. Third team foul on Washington. Broom back to work, and he cashes in again. Broom now shooting 50% from the field, and he has 16 points. Got to sit on his right shoulder. He loves to go. I mean, not that he's broke going the other way, but he loves to go to that side. You can't let him do that. Right back to Brooks. There's four defenders just waiting. Eight eyes on Keon Brooks right there. And he gets fouled going to the basket. Again, it was Jalen Williams facing up with him. And Williams is called for his third foul, 10th team foul on Auburn. That's not mistaken. We've got no Huskies in double figures, or am I missing something? No, you're correct. Nine points for uh, wow. Corin Johnson is the team high. Two Tigers in double figures. It's Broom and Williams, each with 16. Well, the good news is that's 10 team fouls, so they're going to be shooting a double bonus the rest of the way. Bad news is we've got less than seven minutes to make up a huge deficit. Three touchdowns against an SEC team is asking a lot. Three touchdowns plus one. Chris Peterson and Kalen DeBoer. Well, I'll in tell you what, tonight. you talk about two excellent coaches. Kellen DeBoer doesn't have to worry about the ice because he just walks on the water. When he walks into this gym every time, gets a standing ovation. He has done some job with the Husky football team. Oh, Co coach of the year. Mini just missed it. Here we go again. Wide open. If you don't get the steal, no, out of Chris the Moore. He's having a good game. He's now the third Tiger into double figures with 10. Chris Moore seldom scores. I know our viewers wouldn't believe that watching him today. That's just not what he does. Mentioned it earlier, but he only took one shot against USC. He's got 10 points in this game. Fuller with Moore all over him. Do you don't you didn't like that shot time. from Langston? Wilson. Well, no. I mean, again, he's, he, last year he was more reliable from outside, but it's uh, settling for jump shots when you got four people on the perimeter and no chance to get the rebound. Uh, that, that's not what you want to do. Wow. From guess where? If we had a shot chart guy, there'd be so many little O's and X's from that purple paint just above the restricted area. 36 points in the paint now for Auburn. Just over half as Brooks gets inside. And he wants the contact. Just to finish on Chris Moore, when he had 12 against Memphis three games ago, that was only the fourth time in his career he was in double digits. He, he's not somebody you expect to be as productive as he's been this afternoon or this evening. Zep Jasper running some point now. As Moore gets free inside and muscles his way up and in. Moore now with 12 points on five of six shooting. There's no more room in the paint, the shot chart. <laughs> that purple paint turned into orange right now. Yeah, it? it really has. Five minutes remaining here in the second half, Ooh, and there's an interception. Pass. Wendell Green was all over that, and Bajima fouls him. Out of frustrated because of the defense 
by Auburn. Uh, and it's just too easy on the offensive end. Second half has been tough. Good entry pass again. Probably won't give him an assist because Chris Moore dribbled the ball. But again, that's Janai Broom with another good pass. He had those assists we were bragging on early. He's moved the ball very, very well for Bruce Pearl's team. 19 assists on 28 field goals for Auburn. And that's not surprising from the way we've watched it. They just cut off the defense. Well, they've moved maybe early, early in the game. It was slow, but they've moved the ball pretty well. Yeah, and they're continuing to do it right here. Broom, why not? Banks it in. I don't, I don't oh, know. He's staring at his hand. Yeah. I don't think Banks are usually open on uh, the evening, Wednesday evening in Seattle, but it was that time. Well, what, what a response from Auburn after what was a little bit of a painful loss to SC the other day. Up top, Keon Brooks with some frustration let out as he threw that one down. Yeah, good, good pass by many right there. I think it was, was that by uh, Keon. He was Keon to Keon, I believe. It was. 49 points, not going to get it done. And there's a foul on Johnson. Uh, Corn Johnson's had a tough time defensively tonight. Janai Broom has not had a tough time. He has been the man for the Tigers. A times. It's like a freight train just running down the middle. How about five assists and, oh, by the way, a steal and a block. Subpar night. He averages three blocks a game. He's only blocked one so far, but he has been magnificent. 74% from the field on the way to 43 second half points already for the Auburn Tigers. Broom at 6'10", 235. Here comes Keon Brooks. Good play by Braxton Mead. I'll give Braxton some love for that block. Brooks cuts loose a three, and there is Green for the rebound. Three for 18. 17% from the three-point line for the Washington Huskies. One of five in the second half. I hate to say it, that's a better percentage than shot in the first half. Green goes right at Mia, and a foul is called Trump. on Corin Johnson. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to trust your big man. His penetration, when you're beat, let the big man impact the shot. Well, uh, we talked about Auburn's never been here to Seattle, but for Bruce Pearl, it's a return to the pack, where it all began for him, his coaching career in the early 80s at Stanford. As uh, um, Wendell Green steps to the line. Mentored by the excellent, excellent basketball coach, Dr. Tom Davis. Uh, they both have B.C. roots also. Tom coached at B.C. with Gary Williams, and Bruce Pearl is a B.C. grad. You see him sitting next to, to the good doctor right there. That is a much younger Bruce Pearl right there, and that's his bar mitzvah picture right there. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was kidding, Bruce. I, I saw that before. Uh, where, where did that one come from? But I'm telling you what, just an excellent, excellent coach. Happened to have them in the uh, Sweet 16 Elite Eight a couple of years ago when they uh, knocked off Kentucky, as a matter of fact, to make it to the Final Four out of Kansas City. Well, he's preparing his team for the postseason again. No other Power 5 team in the nation has played three non-conference true road games against Power 5 yeah, opponents. Right. This game, USC and Northwestern well, exactly. for Auburn. They're the only ones in the nation that have done it. And not taking anything away from the way Auburn has played today. Auburn losing Sunday in L.A. did not help the Huskies. They came in here knowing they needed this win badly before they went to the SEC. They had lost two of their last three as Keon Minifield knocks it three down. Finally, another three falls for the Huskies, but uh, they had stumbled a little bit. They were sloppy, could have lost the Georgia State game. They did lose at Memphis, uh, and they lost at Southern uh, USC. So they needed to step things up, and they certainly have answered that call. You mentioned what they'll have coming up next. They'll head home to play Florida in seven days before heading on the road to Georgia in the new year and then welcome Muss and the Razorbacks yeah. and playing is probably as good as anybody in the country right now Arkansas so uh, hey 
No nights off in the SEC or the Pac-12. You talk about what UW is looking at. Got to get that rebound. Good job, Cole. Uh, USC and UCLA, the 30th and January 1, and then the 5th and the 8th. Head down for Arizona and Arizona State. There's Johnson with another three. Uh, these threes, we needed them earlier, but it's good to see the two freshmen knock them down. What stood out to you around the league uh, so far this year? I mean, Arizona, UCLA Parity teams. below the top two. Well, top three. I got to be fair to Arizona State because I'm really disappointed they have them ranked as low as they do uh, in, the, in the media polls and in the coaches' polls. There's another long rebound. And there's another dunk. That time it's Dylan Caldwell. Too many offensive rebounds. That's double digits so far for Auburn. But uh, to get back to your question, is Trey Donaldson has a breakaway. Oh, he gets up. Uh, he's, a, he's a heck of an athlete. A quarterback and defensive back we set for Charlie Ward uh, down in Tallahassee. He's a good young and he just can't find time with Zip Jasper and KD Johnson and Wendell Green ahead of him. But your point, you've got three excellent teams at the top. They've already established that. Arizona, UCLA, and Arizona State. And put them in whatever order you want to put in. The Hurley family combined has one loss. Danny and Bobby, it's unbelievable. Danny might have the best team in the country at UConn, and Bobby's had one loss. So those three have distanced themselves, I think, a little bit. But then under that, you can go another six, seven, eight deep. Anybody's capable of beating anybody else, and we've already seen uh, Utah go in and beat, uh, excuse me, beat Arizona. So I think there's going to be a lot of really good games. What we don't need, guy, in the Pac-12 this year is everybody to beat everybody else, and we have a whole bunch of uh, ten and tens at the end. A couple other teams have got to join that top segment, or what's been the top segment so far. Join those three teams to get the uh, amount of players, amount of teams we want. Uh, come March in the big dance. Mia yeah, hearing it from the Auburn fans here after that airballed free throw. Well, we said it was a work in progress. Really, overall, he's done a good job. He's a vastly improved uh, free throw shooter. Came into the game 19 for 25, 76%. But um, clearly, uh, they're still working on it. Well, I think some people thought that maybe Arizona would be a little more. I don't work in progress wouldn't be the word, but it might take them a little longer losing what they lost last year. Somebody better tell Tommy Lloyd it's not this easy to coach because <laughs> he has just been knocking everybody dead since he took over. Just an exceptional job. We knew UCLA would be strong. Jaime Hotkes, Tiger Campbell, forget about Jalen Hill, all the other guys they have, but you knew they would be good. Bobby Hurley's team has been unbelievable. Just Chance, Chance Westry but off the bench way, in his first bucket. Chance Westry's a big-time player. He was hurt, missed most of the preseason. He's a much-heralded freshman. He's going to be a really good player. I don't know how they're going to find playing time for him. Bruce Pearl's team is like 11 deep. Brooks gets the bounce. And Brooks now with 15 points to lead the Huskies. Chance Westry had surgery. Uh, he's come back. He's going to be an impact player. So my old Commonwealth of Pennsylvania out of Harrisburg. Wow. There's Trey Orr, the true freshman from France. How about a big man made the penetration and pass? Dylan, Dylan Cardwell. We talk about his shot block, and that's a really good play. He's also a uh, two-time SEC academic on a roll. Eight dunks for Auburn tonight, by the way, is the stat. Yeah, either in transition or off the dribble penetration by the guards. Uh, UW's defense in the second half in particular, not what we're used to seeing from Mike Hopkins' team. Well, this is one of the best road wins in the SEC this year. Alabama went on the road, beat Houston. For Bruce Pearl's team to come on the road and beat Washington, that might be the second best road win in the SEC. They salvaged the road trip after losing to USC. And the 23rd ranked Tigers run away from the Huskies.